In this recording, we're going to continue talking about how to customize forms. In this case, how to uh, modify a form to use a combo box for a foreign key. Now, the book doesn't talk about this much. The book talks about how if you have lookups, for instance, here's my order table. Come on. There we go. I have a lookup for customers here. If you have these lookups, those can be contradictory or conflicting with forms. I, I don't completely understand that. If we open up our form that we created in the first recording, if you don't have it, you'll go back to 41 or uh, 4.1, the first recording, and create this form. But if I open up that form, notice by default I have a lookup for my customer name. And I have the same lookup, first name, last name, in here. It's already part of the form, and I can drop this down, and I can pick somebody's name, and it works. I, I don't understand the problem why the book makes you go through the process of removing the lookup from the uh, foreign key field and then redoing the um, referential integrity, the relationships and tables. I don't understand why it makes you go through all of that, because the form, if you have the lookup, go uses it. On the other hand, occasionally, like in this case, my customer's name is listed first name, last name, and I think I'd rather have them the other way around. Well, if I want them the other way around on this form, then I can remove this lookup and create my own. Okay, what you can't do is use the uh, go to layout view and the field list and bring the customer in because that will always give you the lookup that's corresponding to the table that's already defined. So if we need a different one, we have to go a different range. So if I want to create a different lookup, first thing I'm going to do is delete my customer field here. And notice when you delete the field, the label goes with it. And before I start, I want to create a query that does the sorting of my, that concatenates my first and last name in last name, first name order. That's different than the one that was in this query. So first thing I'm going to do is create a query. These can come in handy. Create a quick query here based on customers and I want the customer ID. I need that because that's the foreign key. That's the linking field. When I pick a name from the combo box, that's the field that gets saved. So that needs to be included as part of my query. And then I want to take the last name and concatenate it. So I'm going to call this customer. That's the field name. And I'm going to take the cust last name. Doesn't have to be capitalized, but I'll just be careful here and concatenate that to the cust first name with a space in between and sort by that. Run it, and sure enough, right now everybody's alphabetized and I forgot the comma, so let's go back to design view. And in that literal, that space, I want to add a comma as well. So right here. Kind of hard to see. Right, let's see if I can zoom in so you can see the equation, but it shouldn't be anything magical that we haven't done before. And I need to scroll a little bit over here. It's not going to let me, so I need to pull this up a little bit. Don't let me do that either. That's the one I want right there. Pull it up, and there now we can see the formula customer name concatenated with a, those are quotation marks comma and a space concatenated with the first name. I didn't type the square brackets, access inserted those automatically. Let's run that again one more time just to make sure it's good. It is, so I'm going to save it as QRY last first lookup. And I'm going to use that now to create a new combo box. Now when you create new fields. You can do it in either layout view or design view. Okay, so let's try it in layout view first and tell you in advance this is not my favorite. When you add a combo box, you click wherever the heck you want, it doesn't matter. It still puts it up there and it still adds it to the layout which makes it kind of hard to move. There it goes, it's moving pretty good. Okay, and then I can grab one piece of this and take that piece and shrink it. It's not working too bad, but they do seem to be connected. So if I right click, I can remove them from the layout, and now they're kind of individual. Might have been easier to do this in design view, so let's just demonstrate that. Delete it again. Go to design view and add an object. Here's my combo box, and I want it here. You click the little plus sign where you want the combo box to show up, and the label will go to the left of it. 
So there's my combo box. The other advantage of using design views you can see here is I get the wizard. I did not get that before. Right? I want to fill this combo box from values from a query. So in layout view that didn't work. I'm going to use my first la or last first query. I want all the fields. And I don't need to sort it because it's already sorted. If you wanted to, you could sort by customer, but it was sorted in the query, so I really don't need to do it here. And then the last thing I need to do is notice the little checkbox that says hide the ID field isn't here. It's because this query is or this uh, lookup is based on a query, not on a table. So this isn't really a primary key, so you can't automatically hide it. But you can still hide it. I don't want to see it. These numbers don't mean anything. I'm just going to grab the right edge of this field and drag it all the way to the left until it's gone. And then scroll through this. There's Natalie Brown Smith. I think it was, there's Timothy. That was the long one we discovered in the last unit. Seems to get it covered. Next. And now it says where does this value get stored? It gets stored in customer ID. Okay. And then I want to store it in that actual field. So here's the customer field. Now this is the part that maybe the book is a little confused about. It doesn't say customer ID here because the field name in the database has a caption of customer, but it's still the customer ID. And as far as I can tell, this works. What label do I want for this? We'll just say customer name. Finish. Okay, so now go all that in there. It's not lined up very good, so I'm going to spread this out a little bit. There we go. Notice because we're in the design view, these two are attached to each other. But I should be able to select these two. Now here I have to be careful. Right. One of the mistakes that many people make, and I didn't mention this in, recording, in the first recording, is you might want to try to line these up on the left. <clears throat> when you line stuff up using the alignment tool, remember it's only available in design mode. When you line stuff up, when you say align to the left, it aligns to the leftmost object, so in this case it's going to move the order date over and align it with customer name. That's not what I want, so I have to be careful here. The easy fix is to either try to manually align these, which isn't working very well, okay, or make sure that they're over far enough. <clears throat> now when I align to the left, it will align the customer name with the order date. And I also want to align these two to the left. And that works pretty good. Remember those alignments are not available in layout view. And now the last thing I want to do is make these two the same size. Because remember in the first recording we sized them so that they were exactly the same size because I think it looks better that way. So in this case I'm going to use the size to the widest because I want them both to be the same size as the order date. The book also for some goofy reason goes through the process of selecting all of these and making them the same size or selecting all of those and aligning them. Well, my order date and size were already the same size. They were already aligned to the left. It really doesn't make much sense to select them both or select all of them when you don't need them. So now my combo box is back in there and I can pick things and everything's good. Except for one thing. <clears throat> when you press the tab key, it's, you move from one field to the next. You don't press enter in, in forms like this, just like a web form. You press the tab key. When I press the tab key, notice that it skips around here. Okay. Now the tab key in uh, in layout view is not quite as effective, so I'm going to go to design view because the design view it won't touch these labels. So I'm going to press tab, and notice how it skipped over my customer name. And then it goes to all the check boxes and works its way down. That's because I removed the old customer name, put the new one in. Access sets the tab order based on the order that you add the fields. When you use the wizard, it basically sets them from top to bottom. If I had rearranged these checkboxes, the tab order would be off. To adjust the tab order, <clears throat> you have to be in design view. And in design view, again, on the design tab, there's a tab order button, which gives you a list of all your fields. And now you can just move them around. Notice one other thing, that my combo box is named combo 31. Now that's kind of a lame name. Maybe while I'm here I should change that so that it's a little easier to recognize. I might want to use it later in a formula. Okay, so here's my combo box. I'm going to go to its properties and it has a name of combo 31. I think I'm just going to name it customer. Let's see if that solves my problem. Right, press enter, go back to the tab order and now it's called customer. 
These are all the field names from the database. This is a field that I added later, so it's kind of a little bit different. I might have capitalized it better, but we, it's much easier to read than customer or than combo 31. And I want this to follow the order name. So I just drag it up, and now it's in there. Notice there's an auto button. That probably would have worked pretty well here, because it works from top to bottom, left to right. So it might have worked pretty well, though I think these checkboxes might have confused it. You can try it. But if you auto order and it makes a mess, then you have to manually put it all back together again. I only needed to move one field. Let's see how it works now. Press tab, and as it should, it works its way down the form. So don't forget when you insert fields, when you move fields around, check that tab order. It's one of the last things the book has you do in just about every assignment. Check the tab order to make sure it still functions the way you want it to. And adding combo boxes for foreign keys for lookup fields, not very difficult. This one's not a foreign key. These values came from the table definition. Those are manually typed. So all four of those are there. That's not coming out of a table, so that one's a little bit different.